I want kids to know and families to know that prayer is a gift. And when I tell my kids I'm praying for them, I hope that eventually they understand that's meaningful. And when they pray, that's meaningful. And that's something special. Thank you for listening to the Life Plus God podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Robinson. And today I am here with Julie Hawkins and Stephanie Pippett. Julie is the Director of Children and Family Ministries here at Treach Memorial United Methodist Church. And Stephanie is the Director of the TEC Preschool. Welcome, ladies. I'm so glad that you're here with us. Thank We're you. very excited. <laughs> and I have these wonderful special guests with us today because we're talking about the question, why does praying as a family matter? And so I thought I'd bring some people to the table who not only work with children every single day, plan programming for kids and help nurture and grow our kids' spirituality here at Treach, but you're also parents. And I think both of you were once kids too. So <laughs> I think while. <laughs> all those points give you a pretty good understanding of how kids maybe uh, engage with prayer or don't engage with prayer or some of the struggles of praying as a family. Um, I don't have kids. So from an out, but I was a kid once, but from an outsider looking in, um, when I think about praying as a family, I imagine that for a lot of families, it just feels like one more thing on the to-do list of like, oh, great. Now I have to figure out like how to incorporate prayer into my family life. I don't know. I think that's how I would feel if I was a parent. I think that's pretty common. I think a lot of parents feel that way. And there's this pressure to get it right because you want to make sure your kids are praying in the correct way and a lot of parents are uncomfortable with prayer themselves. They are not confident in their prayer skills. They're not sure if what they learned as a kid is actually how they should be praying. They take praying with their children a little more seriously than they do their own prayer lives, actually. So I think that probably hinders a lot of parents because they don't know where to start, what to do, and it's easier to just say, God bless this food. Amen. And then check, we've prayed and we check it off our list, I think. Yeah. Well, Stephanie, why why do you think praying as a family matters, especially for young kids? Um, I think praying, first of all, I think it's very personal. And so to do that together with somebody brings a sense of unity and community um, and peace within your family um, because it is such a personal thing. Um, I also think praying with kids brings a feeling of hope um, and they're able to express their feelings in a safe setting. Um, and it just teaches them to be able to bring anything to God, their uh, joys, their concerns, their struggles, and allows them the opportunity to have someone that is always there, whether they're at school or sports or whatever it may be when their parents aren't there, they have someone that they can talk to because yeah. prayer is just a conversation with God. Well, and I think that's what we want out of our prayer life. And so what I'm hearing is like, Julie, I'm hearing from you that there's this like overwhelming sense of pressure of like, yeah. oh my gosh, I've got to get it right. I've got to instill these values. I've got to teach this discipline that we put on ourselves. And then Stephanie, when you're like, oh, what we, what we want it to be is like a calming experience and a closeness to God. And so what I'm hoping that we can accomplish in this episode today is kind of taking that pressure off yeah. of like, there's not a right way and a wrong way. And there's not, you know, a specific set of words that you have to say as a family or else you're not praying, God's not going to hear you, right. <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. Um, but I think, you know, Julie, some of the things that you were talking about is, um, maybe our parents aren't very engaged in prayer. And, and a lot of the, what we're teaching our kids about prayer comes from our own insecurity with right. prayer of like, we don't get it. We don't understand it. I, I'd love to hear what was your prayer upbringing like as a kid and how does it impact? And I want to hear this from both of you. How did it impact the way that your prayer life is today? I think the best thing about my upbringing concerning my prayer life is it was a regular part of our family. 
It was, you brush your teeth, you get dressed, you pray. It was one of those things that was a habit that was expected in our family. And we prayed before meals every single time. It didn't matter where we were. Um, and we, we ate dinner together a lot. So that was something that was just special and kind of sacred to our family. We prayed at night. It was a part of our lives every single day to the point that I didn't really think twice about how I was praying or what I was praying. I just knew that it was something our family believed in and that it was expected of me. And I had that foundation as I got older and started to learn how to pray, what to pray, um, you know, some self-reflection. I had those skills because I'd been raised with them. And I think that made the biggest difference, especially going through teenage college years. You know, you want to give your kids a basis, somewhere to start with. And just modeling that as a family, like my parents did, yeah. made a difference. A couple of times you've used the word skills. Mm -hmm. when, when you talk about prayer skills, what do you mean? I think it's a skill. I think it's something we have in our toolbox that we need to work on, right? We don't... Everything we do in our life, we prepare for. Um, and when we're working on our faith and our spirituality, and especially the faith of our families, we want to use that toolbox and everything in there that we can, which is, you know, reading scripture together, praying, serving, generosity. Prayer is a part of that. It's one of those skills that we need to teach our children and not only teach them to do, we need to model it ourselves. Mm -hmm. What about your prayer upbringing stuff? Um, mine is very similar to Julie's. You know, we grew up praying before meals and praying before dinner. I remember learning the Lord's Prayer at church, and then I remember practicing it at night um, with mom and dad. Um, and I remember as a preteen being very embarrassed because our family would hold hands and pray at the restaurant Same. in public. And I remember just feeling like, oh, my gosh, are we going to do this in front of everybody? Um, but it was really important to my parents that we did. Um, and so that was just a part of our daily lives. And I think at some point, eventually, I did start praying on my own at night. And I had kind of a... A, the same kind of prayer that I would say every night right before I went to bed. Um, but for prayer times in the family, like we had, um, we had times that we were singing prayers like um, God is great, God is good, or Johnny Appleseed. Um, and then we had other times that we were doing prayers that were not like a written text. It was just kind of speaking to God. So we saw kind of different formats of prayer. Do y'all remember uh, the prayer that this is what stuck with me? Now I lay me down to sleep. Yes. Oh my gosh. If I die before I wake. It's <laughs> I bless creepy. the Lord, my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, uh -huh. I pray the Lord, my soul to take. Yep. Yeah. That. So for me, it's funny because if y'all, if listeners don't know, Stephanie and I are sisters. And uh, to hear you talk about our upbringing in prayer, I think that it felt very different for me. Um, because for me, yes, we did pray a lot as a family, but in no way did that translate to my personal life. And I don't know, I, I don't think that our parents did anything wrong. I think it's something that like, it just felt like something we checked off the list of like, yeah, we pray before meals, we pray, you know, I don't, well, honestly, before meals and before we go to bed is the only time I can remember us praying. And so it was more like a habit at certain times of the day, but I, I felt it more as rote prayers of like the songs and right. the, you know, um, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food, all of that stuff. I don't think it f ever felt personal to me and I still struggle with prayer and I don't know if it's because of my upbringing or just because prayer is hard. Yeah. Like it's really hard to wrap prayer your mind hard. around. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's extremely personal. I will th say that what my upbringing did bring me is like, you mentioned Stephanie of your first thought being to turn to God. 
And I think that's what, you know, those times of we pray before meals, we pray before bed, let's say a prayer when we're struggling, you know, all of these Mm -hmm. things is like when I'm struggling, it's not necessarily like I immediately get on my knees and I say, dear God, you know, but there's something in my heart that just kind of like, I guess you could say pulses out Mm -hmm. in spirituality of like, just crying out for help or support or, um, and that is kind of my go-to. I don't know. I guess that's prayer, but there are often, there often aren't words around it Mm -hmm. or like a specific, uh, format to go with it. I also remember growing up, this may have been more in middle school or upper elementary. I'm, I remember there were times that I was like, anticipating, anxious um, about a test coming up or anticipating something happening at school. And I remember before I would get out of the car, my mom would just like happily be like, hey, I'm praying for you today. And so there was this model of like, oh, she's praying for me. And that's something I could do before my test too, is to say kind of a silent prayer. And I say that to my kids too. Um, my fourth, well, she's going to be in fifth grade. <laughs> my fifth grader, when she's struggling with something, um, I'll just say a quick, you know, like, hey, I'm praying for you today and you can pray before your test and God is always there if you're struggling, you know, just lay that foundation and be a model for that. Mm-hmm. So that's good to hear because I did exactly the same thing every time I took my kids to school when they would be getting out of the car. I'm praying for you today. And as a mom, you wonder, are they even listening to this? Does Do they this think this matter? is annoying? <laughs> Are they just <laughs> slam on the door and running on? You know, because yeah. I think, you know, I had one, I have my own personal history with prayer and growing up, but Alyssa, my sister's just like you. To her, it was a routine. And yeah. she and I've had this conversation and I've said, it may have been rote prayers. It may have been a routine, but it laid the foundation and gave me encouragement to kind of lean into that side of my spiritual self later on. Yeah. I at mm-hmm. least had that foundation instead of starting from scratch. And I think that was, you know, absolutely worth it for me. And when you are acknowledging that you have that inner sense of being, that's praying. Mm-hmm. You know, what we've been taught, you have to say certain things um, and have your eyes closed and be quiet and all of these things that's not really the reality. The reality Mm -hmm. is it's just a conversation we're having with God and he already knows what we're going to say and what we're feeling. Yeah. Well, and it's not, for me, it's not even always a conversation. It's, it's just one of the things that has become prayer for me is just sitting in gratitude. Like, and that is prayer. That is. is being thankful and grateful to God. Cause I think oftentimes when we think of prayers, we're thinking about making requests right. or we're thinking about, uh, you know, support struggles, all of these things, uh, when we have anxiety, whatever it is, but prayer can be way more than right. just making requests to God. Um, I think, yeah, we get caught up in, it's either making a request or praying for other people. Right. Um, And I think that that's because it's the default that we go to for our kids because it's the, maybe it's because it's the easiest to understand or to access when it, like we're starting out in prayer, it makes sense to say, Hey, you can ask God anything, right? You can pray for all of the people that you love, you know, and that's an easy place to start for kids. See, I actually, I actually lean more towards thankfulness when I'm talking with my kids and less towards asking for things or this is sad to say, but even praying for others, <laughs> like, right. um, because to me, it's easy to say, Hey, what are the things that you're grateful for? And thank you for family. Thank you for school. Thank you for our house. Like you can, you can keep going forever and ever with all the things that you're so thankful for. And to have that conversation that God has provided those things for you. And this is a way for us to express to him, our gratitude to me, that's, that's always been easier. And so I think do you that's call how... that prayer with your kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and sometimes we just talk about the things we're thankful for, but a lot of times we, we do that and it precedes prayer. Like we do the, we do a prayer after we talk through those things. I wonder, um, 
with the family is that because you mentioned, you know, I tell my kids as they're leaving the car every day that I'm praying for them. And I wonder if they even care. Or you mentioned, I felt the same thing when we were kids and our parents would have us pray at a restaurant. I was embarrassed. And I was like, oh my gosh, everybody's looking at us. Everyone thinks our, we're weird. Or when well, someone would come to your house. Someone oh, yeah. Someone would come to your uh, house and eat dinner the and then they don't yeah. know you're going to hold hands to pray. Yeah. Yeah. It can be awkward and uncomfortable. What do you think are some of the biggest hesitancies for parents to incorporate prayer into family life? My gut tells me they want to do it correctly. And they, there's probably a fear that if I start praying, or if we talk about prayer as a family, or if we go down this path, what if I get questions I don't know how to answer? I think that's a huge fear for parents. Mm. And my answer is always just lean into it and go, you're not going to have all the answers and that's okay. And you can tell them that, but this is what we believe in as a family. This has helped me when I'm telling my kids as they get out of the car and praying for you today, it's as much for me as it is for them. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times as parents, we don't want to say that out loud, but it's really valuable for kids to know that it works both ways, that this matters to us. And this has helped me through my life. And I hope it helps you with yours. Yeah. I think we often, as kids, we looked to the adults in our lives of like, well, they have it all figured out. Right. And they've, when I'm an adult, I'll unlock this secret to life and then I'll know everything. But until then I, I go to them for the answers and I can't, I mean, as a kid, I don't really remember a lot of adults telling me that they don't have an answer. It seemed more often that if I would ask a question that looking back on it, uh, clearly it doesn't have an answer. They'd come up with something just to have an answer. I think that's changed a lot. I think Mm -hmm. in our generation, that was definitely the way it was. Parents were all knowing superior had all the knowledge and you don't ask questions and don't argue. And I think the generations that have followed they ask more questions, Mm -hmm. I feel like. And I feel like we have embraced acknowledging we don't know everything. So from y'all's perspectives as early childhood educators, um, how do you think family prayer influences a kid's emotional and social development, not just spiritual development? Is it contained to spiritual or is it bigger than that? I don't think it's contained to spiritual. I think um, there's been a lot of research in spirituality in children in the last 10 to 15 years. And science is starting to show us that enabling and equipping kids to acknowledge their spiritual side and pray and use all of the tools gives them a protective balance in their brain. Mm -hmm. And they may not know that they are growing in a relationship with God, but they have these protective benefits that can help them deal with transitions in life or change in life, or especially as they get into adolescence, stress, that basis is there and that it greatly helps the coping skills socially and just dealing with all the situations that are going to happen to them. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. They learn they learn how to process those emotions as they're praying and they learn coping me- mechanisms as they're praying. Um and and I think it's important to teach kids that you can you can talk to God when you're angry, when you're sad, um when it's not fair because that's a big thing for kids. Um it doesn't always have to be thank you for mom and dad you can talk to God about anything. And I think opening that up creates a safe space for kids um, and does allow them to express their emotions in a a comfortable place. I think too, a lot of times parents want to participate in it. And I think it's very important that we have family prayer together, but also that we let kids pray on their own for what they need to pray for and they can pray out loud or Mm -hmm. they can write in a journal or, you know, if they're really young, they can draw pictures to God. I think it's important that we give them the space to express themselves and pray 
in the way that they feel the most comfortable. Mm-hmm. So it's, is the thought that like parents would encourage and create that space and say, hey, you're going to do some private prayer time or like, what does that look like? Yeah, it could be. I mean, it's whatever works for your family, really. It's it's hard to find or it's hard to just say this is what you do across the board. You know, some families pray on the way to school. Some families pray at dinner. But I think if we can encourage, you know, five minutes or time in the morning while you're waiting on a sibling to get ready, whatever time you can create in your family that works, I would highly encourage that. And I would highly encourage parents not to micromanagement, manage it, just mm-hmm. let them, you know, and as kids get older and elementary, you, you're not going to have to guide them to do that. It's more of a question or a reminder at the end of the day. Hey, did you, did you talk to God today or did you journal today or draw your, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. it is that works for them. It's funny that you say that because, um, I was asking my daughter before we did this podcast, I told her we were doing a podcast on prayer and I was kind of asking her perspective on prayer in our family. And I said, what is your favorite thing about how we pray? And she said, she said her favorite thing was how we let them take turns praying at dinner. So like one night it'll be John's turn to pray. And then the next night it'll be Sarah's turn to pray. And she really valued that she had a night that was hers that she could pray aloud for the family um, and express her feelings in her own way. So go Sarah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of different than what you were talking about because you also want to give them time to personally pray, you know, internally. Um, no, but that's great. But giving them the ability, you know, to do it on the on their own and to show them that you value what they have to say. Right. I mean, like, I want kids to know and families to know that prayer is a gift. Mm-hmm. And when I tell my kids I'm praying for them, I hope that eventually they understand that's meaningful. And when they pray, that's meaningful. And that's something special. I, I mean, you go through the parenting phases and you wonder that you're, if you're doing the right thing or not. And, and as your kids get older, you think, oh my gosh, I hope I taught them everything I need to teach them. And a couple of weeks ago, my youngest just about knocked me off my feet because I was being me organizing everything and trying to get everything done. And she said, you know, I, I prayed today for you not to worry about things. Mm. And as your kids get older, you think, I hope they're praying. Are they praying? And turns what are out they doing? They're praying for you. <laughs> and then that's it exactly to find out, okay, not only does she have faith, which I, I figured she did, but not only is that faith there, but she's praying for other people and she's praying for me. Mm-hmm. That I think prayer is just so underrated. And if we just sit back and marvel at the peace it can bring people mm-hmm. and it can bring your family. I think it's just a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. In therapy circles, they often talk about the need for self-regulation of like, and we talk about breathing exercises and all of these things. And it makes me think about um, when you were talking about the psychological development of kids through prayer and the calming that it brings, it's like, well, yeah, that's that self-regulation that all of these therapists are talking about is like being able to take, give yourself a time out, separate yourself from what is you're experiencing right in front of you and kind of center yourself. And of course we have all of these prayers that we do, um, that you can find at tmumc.org slash prayer, but we do the centering prayer. We have the breath prayer. We have Lectio Divina. We have all of these prayers that we're trying to teach adults how to incorporate, but I'm like, well, kids can do this too. Like the breath prayer makes sense for kids. And it is a great foundational, uh, not only for your relationship with God, but for that self-regulation and centering and calmness. Calming mechanism. And then it made me think about like, there are so many little hobbies that kids are into that you could make an act of prayer. I was thinking about, it's it's kind of like paint by numbers, but with the little jewels that yes. you like put the diamonds on, mm-hmm. on the picture, there's the sticker books, there's Legos, there's like all of these things that are um, 
I don't know, it activates a part of your brain right. that's very meditative. Right. And you could turn that into a time of prayer for your kids. Yes. I had the thought too that you were talking about in therapy world. In therapy world, they also talk about, especially with kids, um, negative self-talk and positive self-talk. And I feel like that goes along with prayer and that if if you're telling God something, what is he going to say to you? Do you, would it be the negative self-talk or the positive self-talk? And I think that's just a reminder that there is someone else on the other side hearing this. And what would you say to yourself? I, I don't know if that makes sense. I, yeah. I think sometimes for me, it's what would you say to a friend? Cause yeah. sometimes my self-talk can be very negative. Right. And, uh, my best friend Lexi, if I say something negative about myself, she says, don't talk about my friend that way. Aww. And I'm like, yeah, the things that I say to myself, I would never allow anyone to say about right. the people that I love. Right. And God loves me. Right. Like God would never say those things to me. And God would say, don't talk about my kid that way. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So that positive self-talk is a huge piece of it. And I think that is, you know, I've always struggled with the concept of prayer as a conversation with God because I'm like, well, I haven't really heard God talk to me, you know. Right. Um, but I think that that positive self-talk of like imagining what would God say right. to me, that can be what makes it feel like a conversation because we know based on what we read in scripture and we try the best we can to understand the heart of God. I think it would be pretty easy for a child who grew up in the church to, you know, pretend what would God say to me in this moment? Right. I think it's good to remember that this is not something abnormal or unique that we all struggle with prayer. I mean, the disciples had to ask Jesus, how do we do this? What do we do? So it's okay. And it doesn't have to be a conversation. It can you're right. It's not both ways. I think I struggle sometimes with when people say, oh, I prayed and God spoke to me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, well, God doesn't speak to me. How do you, how do you, number one, how do you hear God? And number two, what, what do you say to that? You know, that kind of throws me off, but then I have to regroup and remind myself, you know, it's really just about that inner peace of, mm -hmm. I have expressed these feelings mm -hmm. and I know they were acknowledged. How do you talk to kids about that inner peace? Because I think that that seems like a tough topic for kids to understand, but maybe I'm wrong. It is. I think the hardest thing about it is getting them to sit still and quiet and learn that inner peace. And, you know, we've tried a couple of different ways over the years and I've, I've gotten away from it, but we're heading back towards it now. Giving kids 10 seconds or 15 seconds to sit in silence and just be present and feel it. And it takes a lot of work. And I think it would take a lot of work for many adults as well. I mean, I don't know how long I can sit still. I'm not good at it. Mm -hmm. But feeling present. And I like to say things like, if you just sit in the grass on a sunny afternoon, what do you hear? What do you smell? What do you feel? Getting in touch with things like that. And it has to start with short amounts of time. Mm -hmm. But we have to allow them to do that. And teach them and give them the tools to do it. I also think being at peace doesn't necessarily mean being still and being silent because I know there are several kids, especially um, in the preschool, I've seen that, you know, they're two to five right. year olds. They can't sit still. Right. I mean, it's really hard for them. And so sometimes we'll give them like a fidget or, uh, you know, one of those squeeze uh, balls or something that they can kind of sit and do something that they don't have to think too hard about, but it kind of just like calms their brain. Those and neurodivergent you, activities. Yes. Yeah. And you can see them go from like a high energy level and high anxiety to just, they're busy, their hands are working and they're doing stuff, but they're, their breathing has slowed. Like they're just calm and they're ready for, for what's coming next, you know? So we, we've talked a lot about the foundations that we're putting in place. If we have a parent who's listening, who's like, okay, well, I've got a teenager and I haven't done any of this. Um, is it ever too late 
No, it's <laughs> never too late. I actually was struggling with prayer life not too long ago, and I kind of got in a rut, and I was in a Bible study here and said that out loud because I, I just say a lot of things out loud. And a man in the Bible study said, hey, I can help you with that. And I think especially, you know, doing what I do professionally and being a parent and wanting to uphold this image of everything, it, I got help. I got help with prayer. I read books and made it um, a part of my day and something that I wanted to work on. And I think that's something that we can say to kids. You know, if your teenager comes to you and says they want to work on prayer or you want to work on it with your teenager, acknowledge that. You know, I'm not the best at this, but I'm going to work on this and here's what I'm going to do and we're going to do this together. It's never too late to start working on your prayer life. And even if you've had a good prayer life, it's cyclical. It might be up and down. We're not always going to be engaging all of those spiritual tools and that's normal. Mm -hmm. What are some helpful ways to get started? Um, if, if you're inspired by this podcast episode and you're like, I want to try incorporating prayer into my family life. I know I'm a person who I am, I make the mistake of all or nothing. And so what I would do is I would go to my kids and say, okay, we're going to start every morning and we're going to be in prayer together for 30 minutes every single day. A long and time. then like the first day that we don't do it, I'm like, well, might as well not do it anymore. Like that's, I, I think. Yeah. That's, I think you have to be careful not to make anything forced. I think saying like, we're going to wake up and pray for five minutes. That feels like a chore. I have to do it. it. Because prayer is so personal. You need, you want to model it for them, but you also want to give them the opportunity to pray in their own personal space, how they feel comfortable. You know, I think, um, if you don't typically pray as a family and if it's maybe feels a little awkward to like start, if y'all haven't been used to it, I think maybe starting with a question, um, like, you know, just if you're sitting around the living room or sitting at dinner, just ask a simple question, like, what are some things you're thankful for? And then inviting them to pray with you or for you to pray for all the things that they're thankful for, maybe even make a list. Um, you can make a list of the kids in their class um, and then you can say their names and pray for them that way. I think starting with a question that is relatable to them, that they have an easy answer to, and then at the end saying, let's thank God for this or let's ask God for help with these. is kind of an easy way to get started. I agree. I think that's great. I think that, um, you know, we're doing a thing in children's ministry now where we have praises and prayers. And just asking them, okay, what's good? Okay, wait, what maybe was not so good? And, you know, kids don't always want to tell you everything. But if you form it in a way of highs and lows or praises and prayers or cares and concerns, you know, something like that, just to start the conversation and then be intentional about, you know what, I'm going to pray about that. Mm -hmm. And, and don't diminish anything they say, mm -hmm. because if you bring that highs and lows, um, you know, uh, there's always going to be a comment about <clears throat> losing a toy or um, losing a pet. There's going to be, you know, extremes or, you know, um, mommy didn't let me have a lollipop today. I mean, you don't want to diminish any of their highs or lows. And you don't want to be defensive as a parent and be like, well, I didn't let you have that lollipop because you weren't behaving. You <laughs> or know? do what I did on a Sunday morning when a kid wanted to pray for a Dak Prescott to have a good day. And I'm like, I don't think God is concerned with this football game. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. Thank you. Well, that's what I've, I've started to... You know, I think I talked about this a few episodes ago of like, why do I think I get to determine what God cares about? Right. Because like, I, I'm, I always thought that was silly too, of like praying that your team wins or whatever. I'm like, do you really think that God cares who wins a football game? A kid does. But God cares how we feel about things and yes. God cares about the things that we care about. So I don't think it's necessarily like picking a team to win, right. but it's like, I care about your feelings yeah. about mm -hmm. this, you yeah. know? Um, but yeah, I also like to decide what God cares yeah. about. <laughs> Definitely. 
definitely. I think the biggest thing is, is listening to the kids and then creating some sort of habit. If it, you know, if it's at dinner and that works for you, great. I still feel strongly that the car ride to school is a good time because they are held captive. They're not going anywhere. You yeah, can't but get out of the car. That's also often not the entire family. Yeah. So like how important is it to make sure, because in today, in today's day and age, it's really hard to get the entire family yes. in a room, even at dinner time, because we have so many activities going on and the schedule is wild and it's people eating dinner at different times and yes. who knows who's doing the carpool which day. And um, how important is it to have the entire family as part of that prayer time? I think it's important, but I don't think it's the reality for exactly the reasons you've said. Kids are starting select sports younger and younger, or they're in theater, or they're in this. I think if if you can do that multi several times a week, multiple times a week, it's hugely beneficial. But don't beat yourself up if you can't. Mm -hmm. And what you do with one kid regarding prayer, do with the other one. Just make it consistent across your family members. And if you have a two parent household, it I mean, there's a good chance that the two parents don't necessarily agree on what prayer should look like or that both may not feel comfortable with praying in the car with their kids. And so um, if you are the one who's trying to lead that conversation, then do it. Lead that conversation with the kids. See if you can pray with them in the car. See if you can pray with them um, at the dinner table. Try to involve the whole family. But I mean, as I've said many times, it's such a personal thing and you can't force it and you can't. You um, shouldn't be forcing the kids or forcing your partner yeah. to pray a certain way. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's any. So as we wrap up, do y'all have any advice that you would give to parents who want to get started, but they feel overwhelmed or it feels like too much for their schedule or whatever it may be? Like what words of wisdom would you pass on to parents? I think the easiest thing is let us help you. By listening to this podcast, that shows me that prayer is obviously concern for you. You might be bringing your kids to TEC or to church on a Sunday mornings. We have all kinds of tools that we use in children's ministry and at church. You know, we send kids home with a, it's called parent queue. It's a sheet that's what we did each day. And there are QR codes on the bottom that you can just scan to spark conversations, to pray together, to listen to a worship song together. We don't have to overcomplicate it. Let, let us help you and use the tools that we have available yeah, and let us don't partner to, together. Don't have to start from scratch yeah, and reinvent the wheel. You really mm -hmm, don't. Yeah. And you don't, you don't have to overcomplicate it. We're yeah. teaching prayers here. They're teaching prayers at TEC. Let that be the foundation. Ask questions about it mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. I would say just go with your family's typical flow. Don't let anything be forced. Um, cause this is a conversation with God that should feel comfortable and it should feel safe. Um, and then also you are modeling for your child how to pray. And so they're listening to what you're saying, whether you're saying a prayer or you're saying, I will pray for you. Um, they're hearing that and they're taking that to heart. Um, and then, you know, we do, we have lots of resources at church. Um, and then there's also lots of resources online. You can Google all like fun ways to pray with kids. And there's all these lists. I mean, you can go for a prayer walk. You can draw pictures. I mean, I found lists of like 50 different ways to pray with kids. Look it up um, because there's some fun, unique ways that don't feel forced. And then I think above all, know that we've said many times, prayer is hard and it's something that we all struggle with. And if you, um, you know, have a bad day that you forget to pray or um, it, the prayer didn't quite go like you thought it would at dinner, don't give up. Just keep trying. Yeah. I think maybe I'll Google fun ways to pray and try them myself. Cause I'm like the art thing, the prayer walk. I'm like, that all sounds great. I want to try some of those things yeah. uh, because I'll say like, as a kid, I had the mentality prayer is boring. Right. And it doesn't have to be. No. Right. 
It doesn't have to be. Yeah. It can be enriching and inspiring and calming and all of the feelings that we want to have. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to carry that peace and contentment with us. And I don't think that's boring. But even if you thought you thought it was boring as a kid, there was something inside you that kept you on that path and brought you to where you are today. Yeah, and which so, is still struggling with prayer. Well, that's okay. But, <laughs> but no. you're asking those questions and you're a faithful person and, and yeah. look where you are. It puts it, what it did is it put the desire within me of like, I have, I'm not good at, you know, the daily set aside prayer time that a lot of people are good at, but there have been times in my life that prayer was extremely meaningful to me. And it wasn't by my doing at all. It was like in a dire situation, I cried out to God and I felt God's presence. And I'm like, okay, I know I have felt it before. I know that it's there. I right. have the desire to experience that again. Right. And so because I have those foundations and because I have felt God's presence through prayer before, I want to keep trying. Right. And I think those are important stories to share and to tell. And they are valuable for you as an aunt, as your niece and nephew get older, to share stories like that with them. And I've for never Stephanie, talked to them about prayer. Well, Dang. You, <laughs> I'm giving you a goal now. <laughs> and especially as you, they get older and you have time with them, and those moments will appear. Yeah. As a parent, as an aunt, as a grandparent, as a friend, as a neighbor, you're going to have opportunities to share. And that's sorry, you're probably trying to wrap up, but (laughs) um, that is something I was going to say is bring God into your everyday life. I mean, it it doesn't even have to be a set aside mealtime or bedtime. Like you see a rainbow in the sky, bring up like, wow, that is incredible. Like God God is so amazing. Look what God did. We are so thankful for things like that. Um, And even just like, I know when we passed by an accident when I was little and I do the same thing now, my mom would always say, Hey, let's stop and say a prayer for that family. Right. Um, And so, and it could be, you know, if kids are talking to you about a bully at school, well, let's pray for them. You know, let's pray for, for them and the people that they're hurting. It, it, it can be so easy and such a part of your daily conversation. It doesn't need to be forced. Amen. All right. Well, thank y'all so much. This was really great advice. I know our parents will appreciate it. And all of our non-parents, anyone who like... Who interacts with kids. Interacts with kids or wants to improve their prayer life. I feel like everything that we've said about helping out kids, we could hold up a mirror and say, yeah, me too. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Life Plus God podcast is hosted, written, and produced by me, Alyssa Robinson, and sponsored by Treach Memorial United Methodist Church in Flower Mound, Texas. Check out Treach online at tmumc.org or in person to see if this church is a right fit for you and your family. We'd love for you to visit us soon. And if you like the podcast, don't forget to subscribe and rate us on your podcast platform to help other people find our content. Join us next week and let's keep growing in relationship with Christ together.